I'm Courtney Julia. I'm always writing recipes for you guys, so tonight I wanted to let you come into my kitchen as I prepare date night steak salads. Now, I don't know about you, but I actually do love getting some salads at some restaurants. I know they say that sometimes the salads can be more calories than getting like a burger or something, so you do gotta be careful about that. However, I love a good salad with vinaigrette, um, preferably um, a balsamic, it's not cream-based. Um, and I love a good salad with like steak and some blue cheese and some walnuts and some avocado. And now all those are high rich calorie things, but they're all the good fat. So it's good for you. It makes a great um, date night dinner salad. So I'm going to make steak salads. The other key um, to doing a steak salad is to pre marinate your steak. That's kind of the biggest trick. So about an hour ago, I got this steak marinating. Basically, you can marinate a steak however you like, but what I like to do is I put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, just, just a little dizzle-dazzle on one side, and then I like my stuff spicy. So I sometimes put some chili garlic sauce on it. Um, my fiance also likes things spicy, so he likes it. It works. Um, just gives it a little bit different flavor. Um, then I'll flip the steak on over. After massaging it in a little bit, I'll flip it over, and then I'll put a little bit more extra virgin olive oil on, some freshly ground pepper, and um, now I actually put garlic salt on tonight because I would typically put regular salt um, in addition to the pepper. Now I try not to use too much salt with my cooking. Um, I just don't particularly care for it, so I figure why not, because everyone tells me to avoid salt, and it doesn't do anything for me, so I figure why not. So I normally use just plain garlic powder, but in this case, um, because I would have put salt to marinate my steak, because it kind of brings out the flavor, I'm going to put a little bit of garlic salt. So I put that on there, and then I just popped this back into the um, fridge, and just let it sit there and marinate for about an hour. I'm going to put it back in just because I'm not quite ready to cook. I'm gonna right. chop so quickly, I'm going to start putting together some of the ingredients. I like to use spinach because I was low on iron for a while, and so spinach is one of the best sources of iron. So now I always like to have it because it's a good natural source. Um, it's a great filler food, um, meaning it helps keep you full. I think um, I've talked before about how I'm a volume eater, so I need to have foods like spinach in there because if I do more spinach, then I'm going to not eat as much steak or blue cheese or the high calorie rich foods. Then I also got some mixed greens um, just because I like both. Just kind of fluff it on in there throw it all in the bowl, set it aside. I like to put all the ingredients that I can into the bowl first um, and then kind of like go and do it as I go. And then once I get chopping, I will warm up my pan so the pan's ready when I go to put it in. So I can put in the lettuce, my blue cheese crumbles. Now these are kind of high in calorie, but if you use them moderately, they're super good. They're blue cheese crumbles. There are light blue cheese, but it's hard to find, and I need to kind of find it this time. So I got the regular because I love blue cheese. Now for a fourth of a cup, it's 100 calories. Now I'm going to be making it for me, my fiance, so he can eat more than I can. So I'm probably going to put in just a slightly over a fourth of a cup and give more of the blue cheese to him. But that way, I'll just sprinkle that on in, and that's it. Now. If you don't want to use blue cheese, something else that I really like is you could grade Jarlsberg light cheese. This is one that I really like, um, and it's pretty low in um, calories. A serving size only has um, 70 calories, so it's pretty good. Um, the other one, and this one is kind of ghetto fabulous, I know, but I love cheese. It brings out so much flavor in food. So I'm a big fan of the Kraft Parmesan because it's cheap, and it's only 20 calories per serving, which is two tablespoons. It's one you ever use, which is awesome. But um, you could also buy the nicer Parmesan. It's just more expensive. And like I said, right now I'm a little cheap. So anyways, throw your cheese on it. And that's when those are about all the ingredients that we can put in tonight before start shopping. So at that point, I want to get out my cast iron skillet and start to warm it up. Now, I like to use a cast iron skillet for this because you can pop it on in the oven and it's going to cook the steaks nice and evenly. So nice and old. It's my great grandmother's. Pretty awesome. So if you don't have one of those, um, just a nonstick pan is fine. I love doing the cast iron skillet. I also have no worries about popping it in my oven. By the way, I should preheat the oven to 425 right when I start 
my steak. That doesn't really work for my lighting now, does it? I forget a lamp. Ah, what's up? Um, <laughs> I'll have to do that again when I pop up with the oven, but for now, it's good. So, anyways, I'm gonna just put a tiny bit more of olive oil into the pan, just to coat it. Turn this up to medium high heat. So we have gas stove, so it's like six, seven, six, seven ish, somewhere around there. And then I'm gonna start chopping. Um, I've got this nice cutting board. My friend Nate Petsko owns Petsko Kitchens, creates fancy boards. It's actually a serving board, but I like to use it to chop because I chop, 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 sweep it across. I can sweep it right into my bowl, just as I'm going to show you. So, anyways. What do I put in salads? I like to have something fruity in my salad. Now, um, something that you can just have around the house so that you can make salads all week long and not worry about fresh ingredients, because I love the reduced sugar craisins. Um, it kind of satisfies that sweet fix. It's low on sugar. Great, excellent thing to have. Tonight, I'm going to use an apple, because I do have an apple around. So I'm just gonna chop an apple up. I'm gonna chop probably about half of an apple. And now when I go to chop this apple, I'm going to first chop it into slices like so, nice and thin. So I'm going to chop up a bunch of those. And then I'm going to go back on over it again. And this time, chop them kind of, um, what is that, horizontal. Chop them hamburger style rather than hot dog style. So I can get some more bite-sized pieces. So just as I was demonstrating before. Sweep, sweep it on in. Super nice, I love it. Yeah, anyways, if you want that, go to cutscopekitchens.com. It's an awesome product, I highly recommend it. Um, the next thing that I'm going to put in is half of an avocado. Now, avocados tend to be pretty high in calorie. And they're high in fat, but it's all the good fat, the kind of fat you're supposed to have. So, I don't know, here's how I see it. It's a vegetable. It does have the calories, which means you probably shouldn't have a ton more calories that day or try to eat lower calorie things if you're including avocados in your diet. But I've never really gained weight by eating too much avocado. I love avocado, I love to include it. And if I'm high on my calories for the day, I definitely don't notice a weight gain like I would if, um, if for example, you know, I had a couple glasses of wine and that put me over um, my calories for the day. You know, it is calories in, calories out, but we also have to think about the nutritional content of the foods that we are eating. Um, for example, it's why we need to think about following our ratios. So right now, this dinner may be higher in calorie, but it's got like no carbs. In fact, the salad dressings that I'm gonna use are pretty light too, and they don't have carbs. So the nice thing about that is I can even have a glass of wine with this dinner, and I'll still be within my ratios for the meal. Now, if I was cooking my fiance a big pasta dish, that's not true. We'd be way over our calories. Um, or even doing a steak and potato, all of a sudden that glass of wine that you want to have with it, you got to cut it out because you have a potato. So um, it kind of just comes down to what you want to eat. If you love that potato, go ahead, have it. I love to have a glass of wine, sometimes even as I cook. So I mix the potato. But it's kind of up to you. It's like whatever you want to eat. But these are just some kind of good tricks to think about. If you like to drink, and you want to have include more alcohol into your diet and not go over your calories, think about how you could cut out some of the carbs in your life. For example, if you're having a sandwich at lunch, maybe instead of having the bread, have a um, low-carb tortilla. All of a sudden, you still kind of get the sandwich, but it's a little different. Anyways, on to the salads. Um, I like to include some walnuts into it. So I'm just going to sprinkle some walnuts in over the top. And that's basically going to... Oh, I forgot the tomatoes. And then some tomatoes. So I'm also going to put in some cherry tomatoes, chop some of those up, and then that pan that is nice, getting nice and hot, is almost ready. So what you take is you take two lids, like so. Stick your tomatoes in, like so. so see how the, like, the lid collects there? Stick my opposite lid in, like so. And then I'm just gonna slide the knife all the way through. So let's see how well this works. If little old Pinterest led me right or astray this time. Oh, hey, he's home. Anyways, he's just came in to say hi to the video. <laughs> Check it out. It worked. Good old Pinterest sliced them right in half. 
So every now and then I'll do a caprese salad, so that's an awesome trick to know. But anyways, the old Rubbermaid top trick. Cool, so now the salad's all ready. The pan is nice and hot. You can tell the oil's kind of burning up. So now it's time to put that steak on. Now, that's something I didn't talk about earlier, the type of steak that you're using. We just have a basic skirt steak here. It's one of the leanest ones. Now, um, I am a huge fan of Kobe beef. I'm not gonna lie, I'm spoiled. I had some sent to me once, I cooked it up. It was marvelous. Um, that kind of steak is awesome. I highly recommend it if you're going all out. This is kind of the cheaper route. It's also lower um, that oh, Kobe's lean. A ribeye though, which is also awesome. It's kind of a higher pork um, value because it's got more fat in it. But anyways, I'm going to throw this on. Because it's really lean, I'm only going to sear it for a minute on each side. So normally if I had a thicker steak, I'd probably sear it for like a good, um, like two minutes or so on each side. But because this is so thin, I'm gonna pop it in the oven to let it finish off cooking, so only a minute. I mean, with this thin of steak, you probably can almost just sear it on both sides and have it be good to go. But um, I kinda like popping it in the oven, it almost like bakes the juices in, so that's what we're gonna do. So you'll kind of know it's done because it will pop off the pan. Like if it's not done searing, it'll kind of stick to the pan. But once it comes off the pan kind of easily, then you can just like flip it on over. Now what's awesome is if you're doing steak just by itself, you then could use the same pan and use the juices to saute your mushrooms and onions. But we're not going to do that tonight. We're just going to make it into a salad. So I can just pop this pan straight on into the oven. While I'm waiting for that to cook, I'm actually going to throw the salad dressing on. So I brought out two options. Now, there's a lot of salad dressings that you can get that are only about 60 calories for a serving, and that's hardly anything at all. They usually have less sugar, and two that I have right now, is this is from the Harris Cedar grocery store. It's a mandarin ginger poppy seed vinaigrette. It's only 60 calories, and that's pretty darn good. That doesn't add too much. It is all carb. I mean, there's no protein, so you have to think about that for sticking to our ratios which once again, if you want to know more about the ratios, I mentioned them, but I don't always talk about them. There's a link right down there um, below in the more info. Yeah, just go to that and it'll explain everything. Um, and then this one, Nanny's Naturals, but it's the Light Goddess. Um, the regular goddess is super good, but the Light Goddess is even better. So that's what I'm gonna use tonight. It's kind of just got like a gingery feel to it, um, but it, it's kind of like, yeah, I got a little ginger taste to it and it's pretty awesome. It's gonna go well with the steak, so. I will just dump that on in, lightly drizzle it on top. Now, the interesting thing about this is it's kind of like a yogurt base. I think that's why it's so low in calorie. So you do gotta kind of shake it out and it kind of looks a little funky. It wouldn't work if you didn't mix the salad, which is why I think I mentioned before, the best trick to making a salad like you get at a restaurant is that you have to use a bowl and mix everything up. If you just try to like put it all on top of a plate and do one ingredient at a time, it just doesn't work. You won't be happy. You won't enjoy it as much. So take that step, use the bowl, dirty another dish. It is definitely worth it. So now we're just going to pop our steaks in the oven that we preheated at 425. It probably only needs to cook for another good five minutes because it's so thin. Normally the trick to cooking like a thick juicy steak it's two minutes seared on one side, two minutes seared on the other, and you pop it into the oven for about eight to 10 minutes, depending on the thickness. Goes right every single time. These thin steaks, I like my steak a little bit medium rare, so I'm going on the lighter side, side tonight. But so anyways, while that is in the oven, I can toss my salad, because then I can just pop it on some plates and be good to go. So, to toss a salad, hopefully I don't need to explain how to toss a salad, but. I actually maybe I should explain my technique. I like to use prongs and then a big fork. So the fork of a thing, but not the spoon. I like to use the prongs because that kind of helps lift and separate just a little bit more. So prongs and a fork, lift and separate, shake it, toss it around, get everything nice and coated. Remember that dressing's a little thick, so it needs to mix up. Perfect. Nice and tossed. Then when my steak is ready, I can pop it on out. Put the salad on the plate, cut it on up, and I've got dinner. This video didn't even take me 8 to 20 minutes to record, which is how quick it takes to cook this meal if you just do a little work beforehand and pre-cook um, 
premarinators taste.